Hi everyone, uh, in this video we are going to start coding uh, and we are going to start building our search engine with crawler and parser. So um, let's start coding. Like I said, we are going to search over subreddit learn programming. So let's go here. Um, all right. So there is a bunch of posts and let's start with getting, let's say, a post and extracting this content, the text. Uh, we, are going, we are not going to bother with uh, extracting comments for now because I would like to uh, keep it simple. So. Let's see. First of all, we need to learn. Uh, we need to uh, download a page to learn how to download a page. And for this, um, and for this task, I'm going to use Python library called Requests. So let's search for it. I have used in in the past, but uh, you asked me. But I don't remember. I have used it in the past, but I don't remember uh, the exact um, API. And you asked me not to prepare for the videos in advance. So I'm going to show you how I read documentation. Um, so let's see. Uh, it's loading. All right. So uh, first of all, let's go here. I'm going to use Python shell. If you just launch a Python, it shows you a shell where you can um, experiment with things, right? Uh, if you're not familiar with, with Python, ask me to record another video, but I'm going to assume some proficiency in it. Uh, let's see if I have, a, if, if I, let's see if I, um, sorry, English is not my native language, so sometimes I'm going to stumble over words. Let's see if I have this library installed, so I'm trying to import it now. All right, works. And now I'm going to experiment with getting a page, all right? Okay. Mm. First of all, I don't need the auth component because because uh, downloading a Reddit page uh, doesn't require you to provide a password and username, so I can just download it and this url i'm going to replace with the address of this page let's see how it works all right so let's go back to the documentation uh, let's see status code okay i don't know what the status code means so let's see what it means um it's in Russian. I'm going to show you in English, of course. Um, ta, ta, ta. Okay, it's too many requests. And it means that uh, I'm making too many requests for to Reddit. Uh, I don't think I'm making too many requests for Reddit, but uh, Reddit is very um, strict. Uh, it's kind of allow you to browse freely uh, using your browser, but if you are going to use automatic tools like I do now, uh, it's kind of strict. It doesn't allow you to make lots of HTTP requests. So let's try another time. Maybe we are lucky now. Okay, it doesn't work, didn't work. Another time. Okay, it's now 200 uh, and 200, and 200 and status code 200 means it's okay everything went well so let's go back to the documentation and what i worry about is text all right here is mm, text it's not quite the text we want all right it's kind of long it's um, it's a full http oh sorry it's a full html page 
Mm, but we see some familiar contents. So here is the title. Mm, what we are going to do now is uh, learn how to extract it. Um, so to do this, we need to figure out uh, we need to figure out how this page is structured. Now, in fact, um, Reddit has some sort of API, right? So we could get this post without you using this API. But I'm not going to do this because I would like to show you some basics of how to parse an HTML. So I'm going to launch a Firebug and look at this page. Firebug is a super convenient tool. If you haven't used it, give it a shot. Uh, and I'm going to narrow down this. All right, OK. Uh, I'm not good with uh, this tool, but I'm just, whenever I need to figure out how to get some part of the web page, I just kind of browse it like this. It's not probably very efficient, but it works for me. All right, all right. Uh, okay. Okay. As you can see, it highlights whenever I mm, hover over here. Okay, great. So I think I found how to... I, I think I found where the text resides. Okay, so now we need to figure out how to parse it. How are we going to parse it? Uh, we are going to use library called um, beautiful soup uh, i hear there is several versions of the of this library and if i remember correctly the recent one is beautiful soup 4 so we are going to use it okay so let's go to the documentation and see if we can um, use it okay so it says we need to import this beautiful soup Mm. name okay works before because i have used it, this library in the past so i have it installed but maybe you will, if you are going to experiment with uh, this library maybe you will need to install it manually uh, okay so what we have here is some simple example it, we need to create a beautiful soap object right and then we could get some nice stuff from the page. Let's see. Uh, we need to provide HTML and we already knew how to do this. We are going to request um, text attribute from the response, right? And let's see, let's launch this example. All right, it works. As you can see, it's print prints prettified HTML. Uh, even more longer. Mm. All right, it's super long. So here are some, but it's more readable. Uh, there is some comment texts. All right. So let's see how to extract the necessary information. Okay, we can get title. Let's see if it works. Soap object, oh, sorry, soap title. All right, it returns, returns, uh, it returns the title of the page and it seems to work. Okay, let's, Let's try what this one works. Let's try string. Okay, so it returns fancy string. Um, extracting all 
Another common task is extracting all the text from a page. It's probably not what we want, but uh, let's do this. Let's see if it works. Okay, so, okay. Seems like it's removed all the text, and now there are only only text or maybe okay it's not quite the text but it looks like even better version but it looks better okay let's narrow down it a bit more okay What I'm looking now, what we need to do now is to provide some sort of selector. We need to narrow down this uh, to exactly the text we need. And to do this, we need to provide some sort of selector to the soup object. So I'm just looking over the documentations to find how to do it. Um, like I said, I've already used this library before, so... Um, Maybe I will be able to find it really soon. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So I think I figured it out. Uh, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with CSS selectors, I'm going to give you a quick over overview. Uh, so let's see if it works. Uh, so as you can see, there is a tree-like structure of parsed HTML and uh, Okay, it's not parsed HTML, but there is a tree-like structure, and uh, we have some sort of querying, and Beautiful Soap provides some sort of querying mechanism, and we are going to use it. So first of all, as you can see, our text is enclosed into a div, and this div has class MD. Okay, let's see. And if I want to select a div with MD class, I'm going to do it like this. Let's see if it works. Okay, it didn't quite work. Work it. Um, it selected a bunch of stuff. So I think I need better version. Okay, let's try selecting div based on the, the list classes. I think let's try select a div with class user text uh, user text body. Okay. Okay, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how uh, how much fun to uh, look at me just trying to figure out how to parse it, but it may take another couple of minutes or maybe 10 minutes.
que ver que ainda ver my Firefox top to respond um, basically what I'm doing right now is just trying to, is just reading some documentation and trying to figure out how to extract the necessary element hmm It's kind of frustrating. Okay, mm, let's try some quick Google search. Um, let's. Okay. okay. What I need to do is to provide some sort some complex CSS selector. Um, let's see how to do it. Hmm, there is some extension, but I'm not sure if I want to use this, an extension. Let's see how to how to do it in vanilla beautiful soup. All right. Yeah. All right, it seems like it, I've noticed this bracket and it seems like, uh, it seems like Beautiful Soup returns a list. Let's see how many elements are there, 10 elements. Okay, let's see them one by one. Uh, all right. Lots of stuff, okay. Oh yeah, I, I think I found the text. As you can see, this is exactly what we need. Uh, I don't think it's very robust if I just do it this way. And I think I need a better way of finding this element because it seems like uh, the first element is just a sidebar this this thing right but what if what if something changes uh it's not going to be very robust but it seems like there is but it seems like uh, like we can get almost what we want let's see if just text work okay great I've just uh, tried to see if I can append text to this and it seems like I got exactly what I needed exactly the text of post uh, so it works it's probably not very robust but let's write some code and we are going to change it later okay so I'm going to fire Vim and I, at, at this point, I'm not going to bother with uh, complex project structures. So I'm just going to create one file and then I'm going to uh, split it into more or add more files. Okay. So as you remember, we need a uh, request library, importing it. We need also uh, beautiful soup, beautiful soup for library let's write some function uh, let's call it download url because it is download url uh, it will take one parameter url uh, 
Okay, uh, here I'm going to find our code in history right now. Wait a minute. Okay. Sorry. So I'm selecting it, pasting it here. Hmm. And of course, we are not going to use it. Instead, we are going to provide our parameter, which is URL. Now we need to check for uh, the response code. I think I'm going just throw some sort of an exception if it's not if it's not 200 i'm just going to raise an exception non a case status call i prob i prob i will probably replace it with some other code but for now let's just throw an exception I like to work iteratively and not uh, design all the project in in every point and I like to work iteratively and not to and not design to down to every single detail I just code then see how it works and if it doesn't work very well I'll I replace it with with some other code which work better all right so okay so i'm going to insert the status code and if everything went okay what we do is we create okay i think it should be uh, should be from beautiful soap for import beautiful soap. Okay, let's do it. Beautiful soap. Mm, okay, I don't quite remember what it was. Okay, just we, we just take we just take HTML, pass it to this object. Uh, to this constructor of beautiful soap object and then what we do is we uh, select div tag and we are going to select user text body div that have user tag that has user text body tag and we are going to select just the text of the post Okay, I, I've just decided that we need to make two functions. The one ladder will return just the HTML, and there will be function parse text, and it's going to take HTML as its parameter. So this function will make beautiful soft object from which provided HTML. It's going to search for a div that has user text body class. It's going to take the first um, of such divs and it's going to return the text in it. As we figure it out, it just uh, returns the text of the post. Okay, and let's return, oh, sorry. Okay. So we wrote some code, let's test it. Let's test it. Okay, from, oh, okay, let's just do import search engine. Hmm, some error, some error. Anina does not match any auto indentation level. Oh, okay, there is uh, extra space. And Python is very sensitive to such things. Okay, let's make proper indentation and try another time. No module named beautiful soap 4 Okay, why? Mm. 
sorry. So, it's kind of weird. Okay, from it should be from BS4. BS4 import B and I can spell beautiful soup properly. Let's try another time. Import search engine to work. Let's test our code. Um, double Okay, it so throws an exception. It means we make too much requests to Reddit. Let's try another time. Still not working. Okay, it worked. It's kind of weird, but let's also test parse text function. Oh, okay, it, sh it should be search engine parse text. Global name beautiful soup is not defined. Um, I can't spell beautiful correctly. One more time. It's wrong. Oh, okay. Since we changed the file, but we, we also need, we changed the file, but we also need to tell Python that it was changed. Let's see if it's going to work because uh, Python shell is kind of weird with this stuff. Um, no. I think there was a function called reload. I'm going to explain what it does it, when it just reloads this model that we wrote. We made some changes, but we need to tell Python that we made those changes. All right. Did it work? Yes, it did work. So, I'm going to end this video now. Uh, thanks for watching. So today we started to implement crawler and parser. Uh, we are going to add more code later. And for now, let's commit this code. Git add. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to provide to add more meaningful description. They are working on crawler and parser. And now we are going to add this code on GitHub. Right now we committed it locally, but we also need to add it on GitHub. Let's see if it worked. Okay, I think I have have open it here. All right, it worked. Here is our code. So thanks for watching.